Hi there. Hope you are doing well. In this video, I will cover different polarity formation in Drosophila. You will understand anterior-posterior polarity formation, dorsal-ventral polarity formation, an overview of pair rule and segmentation genes. Let us start. So let's start with a uh, slide from where we left in the previous class. So in the previous class, I just gave the brief of the genes involved in this Drosophila whole developmental process. So there are basically three types of gene. One is maternal. Then second is segment uh, segmentation genes. One is maternal. Second is segmentation gene. Third is homeotic genes. Third, uh, fourth, uh, the like the second segmentation gene can further be divided into three. One is gap gene. Second is pair rule gene, and third is segment polarity genes. So basically, there are uh, three types. One is maternal, then segmentation, then homeotic selector gene. This segmentation gene is further divided into three. One is gap gene. Second is pair rule gene and third is segment polarity genes. So, what are the like the representative genes inside or part of each gene category? I have kept in single box, like easy to remember for that purpose only. So, in case of maternal genes, there are basically six representative genes. One is hunchback, then biquoid, then caudal, then nanos torso and tall function of each is i will uh, like tell like how they uh, function in, in this process in the whole process of drosophila developmental and then segmentation gene there are basically three types of that segmentation genes one is gap gene pair rule genes and segment polarity genes in case of homeotic genes representative genes are labial Antinapedia, sex comms uh, reduced, deformed, proboscipedia, ultra bithorax, and abdominal A. As I told, segmentation gene is divided it's, or further categorized into three gap genes, pair rule, and segment polarity. The representative genes of gap gene category is crupal, nerves, hunchback, giant, and tailless. The genes involved uh, comes that comes under this pair rule gene category is hairy, even skipped, odd skipped, rent, foshi tarazu, sloppy paired, and paired. Then engrailed, gooseberry, hedgehog, past, smooth, and wingless. All these comes under segment polarity genes. So how this polarity, uh, like anterior polarity forms in the oocyte as i told in the previous class that the critical events occur during or starts from the oogenesis process so just we'll brush up like fastly we'll just brush up like uh, what is nurse cell how this forms from the previous class so as i told uh, after this oogenesis at clash uh, in the process of oogenesis so there is one uh, oocyte Okay, towards the posterior end, then there are 15 nerve cells that are present towards the anterior end, and all these nerve cells, their function as what? Their function is to provide mRNA and protein for the oocyte as a nourishment. So, nerve cell basically synthesize gherkin. Gherkin protein is basically synthesized by nerve cell because nerve cell provide what? mRNA and protein. So, Gherkin is basically uh, belongs to TGF beta family. Gherkin belongs to TGF beta family and it is synthesized by the nerve cell. In the posterior end, posterior end, end is where towards that oocyte, where oocyte is present, that end is posterior region. So, in the posterior region, Gherkin mRNA transported toward the oocyte nucleus. Fine. 
means towards this posterior region this gherkin mrna that is synthesized by whom it is synthesized by the nerve uh, nerve cell nerve cell produces gherkin that is basically of tj of beta family it is transported from that posterior region towards the oocyte oocyte nucleus means this uh, from the posterior region this gherkin protein that is get uh, transported towards the oocyte nucleus fine this gherkin protein is localized between the nucleus and the cell membrane this here as we can see this is green uh, this is uh, denoted by the gherkin protein this green are denoting the gherkin protein so there will be receptors because if there is a protein so it uh, there should be a receptor to which it will bind so on the terminal follicle cells there are receptors for this gherkin protein here as we can see is a orange shaped so these are like uh, these uh, these receptors are known as torpedo torpedo basically belongs to rtk family or uh, it is a gherkin receptor where the gherkin protein gets bind this gherkin has a special specific uh, specialty is that it diffuses only a very short distances fine and gets bind to the torpedo that is a receptor of gherkin now as the gherkin binds to torpedo so this process this side becomes the posterior and and the process of binding of gherkin to the torpedo gives to posterization of follicles posterization of follicles is done and hence this side is posterior end fine these posteriorized follicles they reorganize the egg microtubules and form anterior anterior means first process is what formation of posterior end once this posterior end is properly formed the posterized follicles reorganize egg microtubules and then they form the anterior side here as we can see this anterior side is formed after the posterior end is totally formed and then anterior side formed by these posterized these posterized follicles they reorganize the egg micro this posterized uh, follicles they reorganize the egg microtubules and form anterior end so this is the brief like how the anterior posterior, posterior polarity is formed so basic protein that is being involved in this is gherkin protein gherkin protein is what gherkin protein belongs to a family of tg of beta family and the receptor which is present on the posterior end of follicle cell or the like um, uh, towards the posterior end is torpedo that is the receptor to which gherkin, gherkin binds and gives the posterization of follicles so now this is this was the brief like how uh, this polarity is being formed now the point is what kind of proteins or are involved in this process so there are basically four proteins one is hunchback second is bicoid third is caudal and fourth is nanos they form a particular uh, kind of gradient and this gradient result in anterior and posterior end means how like uh, where which protein is higher or what is the concentration of these proteins at the ends they decides which end will be anterior and which end will be posterior so as i told there are four proteins hunchback bicoid caudal and nanos so hunchback and bicoid and caudal and nanos before the fertilization means in case of unfertilized egg this bicoid and nanos are at end means bicoid is at anterior end and nanos is at posterior end okay in case of unfertilized egg and the hunchback and caudal are at normal concentration mean there there is no such gradient in case of unfertilized egg but after fertilization this bicoid and hunchback they just uh, they uh, form a gradient in such a way that hunchback and bicoid concentration is higher in anterior end and caudal and nanos concentration is higher at posterior end so basically in unfertilized egg bicoid mrna is located at anterior tip and nanos mrna is located at posterior tip until ovulation and fertilization after this 
uh, once the ovulation and fertilization is done, then bicoid and anos mRNA are translated into protein and forms a gradient. This bicoid protein is highest at the anterior end. As I already told, this bicoid protein is highest at anterior and nanose protein is highest at posterior. So this once this gradient, as I already told in the previous classes, one term was there, morphogen gradient. Morphogen gradient means the concentration of particular protein is higher towards one end and uh, the concentration of other protein is higher towards the other end. So in case of posterior, the concentration of caudal and nano should be higher and the concentration of hunchback and bicord should be very low. As here we can see in this figure, uh, towards the posterior end, this concentration of hunchback and bicord, this red and pink line are getting towards the zero, means their concentration is very least in, uh, towards this posterior end. Whereas, and uh, if we see here this anterior end, here the concentration of hunchback and bicord is very high and the concentration of caudal and nanos is very low. So this is forming a gradient kind of condition where the concentration of particular protein is higher towards one end and the concentration of other type of proteins is higher towards the other end. So this is how the gradient is formed and this is how the anterior and posterior side of a drosophila is formed. This is in detail. Like this is how the uh, this gradient looks like. It means if you just stain uh, with a green, the bicoid end will be like a fluorescent image. If you get this green end is showing towards the bicoid and the red, red end is showing the caudal end. So as I already told, this nurse cell, what it does, nurse cell gives nourishment as well as mRNA to the oocyte to go, grow. So uh, this bicoid mRNA is basically present towards the anterior and this nanos mRNA is present towards the posterior end. So uh, once this mRNAs are already present, but uh, after this fertilization, they form a gradient and this bicoid mRNA is towards this anterior portion and nose is towards the posterior portion. And this uh, here, as we can see, bicoid and caudal are there. Caudal is towards the posterior end, bicoid is towards the anterior end. Whereas in this here, as we can see, after this maternal hunchback is it was concentration was normal, but after fertilization, now hunchback has uh, restored towards the anterior end and nanos, this blue portion, as we can hear over uh, here, we can see this blue portion is towards the posterior end. So this forms the, uh, this form the posterior end and why it is being formed because the concentration of nanos and caudal as we like if we combine these two figures. So this caudal protein and nanos protein, they are both towards the posterior end and the bicoid protein and hunchback protein, their concentration is very much higher towards its end anterior and, and thus they form the anterior side of drosophila. I hope this is clear like which protein is higher towards which end. So here is this mature egg after fertilization. So uh, as I told, bicoid is towards anterior, nanos is towards the posterior. This gradient gets formed and cellularization occurs. Anterior ends, as I told in the very first class of this, like anterior is towards the mouth. So after cellularization, each cell will be divided. What will be the head, thorax, abdomen, and then tail side. So this tail side or telson forming region will be towards the posterior. Acron means, means face. Acron means face, telson means tail. Telson means tail, acron means face. So acron means face and telson means tail. Telson, tail. T for tail and T for tel, uh, telson. So acron is face. So after face, there will be head, then there will be thorax and then there will be abdomen. So this is how the structure is formed of the adult drosophila after this concentration uh, gradient forms. Then, as I told, the very interesting part of all the studies is what happens when something get mutated. Fine. So here is a, a single experiment it is given. So here we'll learn like if 
if it is if if something it gets higher or some if, if something gets muted what will happen so here as we here here as we can see there in the picture there are three three experiments so in the first experiment what is happening bcd minus bcd minus means this is by quite mutant it doesn't have mutant okay so what does bicoid does bicoid is towards the anterior and it forms the face or head region so if bicoid mutant is there there is no bicoid and if we provide one uh, bicoid to the anterior end then what it will happen bicoid was not there now we are providing bicoid so now if we are providing bicoid then it will form a normal development of drosophila wild type of drosophila so in wild type of drosophila as i told in the previous slide previous uh, is what first acron means face will form then head will form then tail will form then abdomen region and then the stain means uh, face head thorax abdomen and tail Telson is for tail, acron is for face. After acron, there will be head reason, then there will be thorax reason, then abdomen, and then telson means tail reason. So this will be a normal development from head to tail. This was the first experiment. In the case of second experiment, again it is a BCD minus. BCD minus means again it is bicoid mutant. If it is a bicoid mutant, then now what we are doing? We are doing is we are adding this bicoid towards the middle of that mutant if we are providing middle as we already know from where the bicoid will be higher it will be the anterior end anterior end means what it will form the head thorax and abdomen so in that case what will happen head will form in the middle means head will form in the middle if there is a head then thorax abdomen testron will form and the same thing happens towards this end also head thorax and then tel telson means tail so there will be head in the middle so in this experiment if this happens the so what will happen head will form in the middle and the last experiment they have done what they have taken a wild type wild type means that is able to give a normal development it is already having this uh, morphogen gradient of proteins of bicoid and nano so it doesn't need uh, need any like protein as it is already a wild type but here what we are doing we are adding to the posterior end of wild type embryo if we are adding towards the posterior end the bicoid mrna if we are adding it toward the posterior end what it will does now as this um, bicoid is added to the posterior it will treat it as a anterior end and what will it do it will form acron head thorax abdomen fine and this end is also anterior because it was already anterior in wild type so in that case it will form acron head tail from this side also if you see from the anterior side acron head tail and abdomen if we see from the anterior side acron head tail and abdomen and again we are providing to a, like towards the posterior end so it will also treat as the anterior end and now it will be acron head tail abdomen so there will be two heads so in that case there will be two heads in a single drosophila so this is the mutant cases which can happen and which which are very easy to ask in csi net questions uh, question paper so there are in the this developmental part the most interesting and the topics that uh, the questions that are easily formed and easily comes in is these mutation cases so i'll request you all to pay attention to these mutant cases whenever it comes uh, gradually in these later uh, classes of this developmental biology here as we as i had already told bicoid and hunchback is present towards the anterior end and nanos and caudal is present toward the posterior end so what is the function of bicoid apart of forming anterior and posterior end its function is it inhibit here as we can see the sign so bicoid is inhibiting the caudal and similarly nanos is also inhibiting hunchback so what is doing first thing is that 
Bicoid protein inhibits the translation of caudal mRNA at the posterior end and let the caudal protein to be synthesized only the posterior end of the cell. Means bicoid function is to inhibit caudal towards the anterior end. It does not allow the caudal protein to be in the anterior end and it just let this protein to be synthesized only the posterior end of the cell. Similarly, the nanos, what it does, it is also inhibiting the hunchback and let it to be present in the anterior end and does not allow to be it in posterior end. This is how this gradient is formed. If this protein are not like inhibiting each other, then in that case, caudal will also present at the anterior end as well as towards the posterior end. So this is the bicoid protein which is inhibiting the caudal to be not present towards the anterior end and only present at posterior end. So the same function is also done by the nanos. It also inhibit hunchback so that it remains towards the anterior end and does not come to posterior end posterior end. If it does not work in a proper manner, in that case, there will be no anterior and no posterior because they will not allow to form the gradient. And if there is no gradient, in that case, anterior and posterior end will not form. Nanos inhibit hunchback to be in the posterior end because its presence is necessary at anterior end and vice versa. Okay, uh, so this is the, uh, this is what I told in the, uh, it's just a summary. So first is that in early, uh, before the fertilization, hunchback and caudal remains concentration is same. Once the fertilization happens, after that bicoid and hunchback concentration is higher towards the anterior end and nanos and posterior concentration is higher towards the posterior end. So, uh, bicoid, uh, so bicoid mRNA gives the bicoid protein and it inhibits the caudal as I already told. The same in posterior end towards the posterior end. What, what happens? Nanos mRNA forms a nanos protein and it inhibits the hunchback to be not present towards the posterior end and only nanos and caudal present at posterior end. This is how the anterior and posterior poles of Drosophila is formed. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you everyone. Uh, today we will learn like how the dorsal and ventral poles are formed in Drosophila. What kind of genes are involved in that process and how this process uh, occurs and that results in formation of dorsal and ventral poles in the Drosophila. So I just want to remind like what I taught in previous class. So before starting, like what is dors uh, dorsal ventral polarity, how it forms. So before starting that, I want to just revise like what is dorsal and what is ventral because without like if we are getting, if we are confused in dorsal and ventral itself, so it will be very difficult to learn how those poles are formed. So basically, dorsal is the portion of a drosophila that faces upwards, means that faces towards the roof side. Okay, and that belly portion that is facing towards the floor is ventral. So this is like, I think this is like clear, like what is dorsal and what is ventral. So uh, when the cell is at blastoderm stage, then already the dorsal and uh, ventral poles are formed. In that case, it's like here in the picture, it is the transverse section of the cell. So in that transverse section, towards the dorsal side, the first layer what is present, that is what? Amino serosa. Amino serosa is there. Then after that, dorsal ectoderm is there. Then neuroectoderm, then mesoderm. And this mesoderm is towards the ventral side, means towards the belly region of that drosophila. So this is the just a transverse section of a blastoderm, means when the cell is at blastoderm stage, at that time, the how the cell, uh, how the layers are there and how the cell is looks like, this is just the view, like it is a transverse view of that. So towards dorsal side, what is present? Towards dorsal side, there is aminocerosa. And then after that, 
dorsal ectoderm, then neuroectoderm, and then mesoderm towards the ventral side. So here, as you can see in this picture, so before, like once mesoderm starts to form, so first stage, what happens? It is just a lining. As we hear, as we can see, this is just a lining where when the mesoderm starts to develop. So after this first step, what happens? This mesoderm starts to just like forming forming a loop kind of situation like here as we can see it is now forming a loop and this loop will goes inward and this therefore the mesoderm layer will be like inner lining fine so earlier what happens in the first stage this mesoderm is like a lining or in a straight line and then after uh, after few time it goes inside and uh, like forms a loop as we can see here so this is how the mesoderm is formed so mesoderm is basically what the point of uh, this uh, slide is what in this i just want to so show that how the layers are formed like towards the dorsal side amino cells is there and mesoderm is towards the ventral side means when cell is at the blastoderm stage itself then only dorsal and ventral poles are already defined okay so now how this like dorsal and ventral poles form which protein or how like uh, which what kind of genes plays their important role in forming these two poles dorsal and ventral poles so dorsal gene the basic protein that or we can say the most important protein that plays role in ventilization and thus forming both poles dorsal and ventral so this is very important protein that is what dorsal gene so dorsal is the uh, dorsal gene which forms a dorsal protein and this protein is the focal protein means very important protein that plays a very important role in the development of dorsal ventral polarity in the developing fly so basically this gene what it does it forms a protein and this protein is basically a transcription factor that activate also and repress also the zygotic genes that are very much important or responsible for differentiation along the dorsal ventral axis during the early stages of development so what happens like if this protein is in very large amount if it is in large amount it will form mesoderm why in the first slide itself i told you like mesoderm is towards the ventral side first thing second thing is this that dorsal protein is responsible for the ventralization of the cell so it decides the ventral fate of the developing fly so dorsal protein basically what it does it it's it is important to form the ventral side of drosophila and it inhibits the, the dorsalizing of genes means it's basically form ventral side so if we just join these two points then we'll get that if dorsal is in very large amount in that case mesoderm will form and if the dorsal is in less amount then it will form ectoderm or glial cell why earlier in the previous slide what i showed was the transverse section like this okay now if we go in the lateral view then we'll get this the same thing towards the dorsal it will be amino serosa then dorsal ectoderm then lateral ectoderm then neurogenic ectoderm and then mesoderms form and this mesoderm is towards the ventral side means towards the belly region of drosophila so basically this dorsal gene what is does it forms mesoderm of phenotype first thing second thing is that it promotes the ventilization of genes or it causes the ventilization of genes and it also inhibit dorsalizing of genes means it inhibits the dorsalization in the cell of this uh, developing fly so how this dorsal ventral polarity is formed so as i already told that the main protein that uh, like there are lot more types of protein that are basically involved in both the like dorsal pole or ventral pole formation but dorsal protein is very much important or plays a very key 
role in this process so first thing is that in its like uh, in its inactive stage dorsal protein is bound to cactus protein as we can see here dorsal and cactus protein both are bound to each other so in that case dorsal is inactive means it is it cannot function as it is already bound to another protein that is cactus protein so if what happens if the dorsal remains bound to cactus if it remains bound to cactus in that case all the cell will be all the cell will be if in case dorsal protein is bound to cactus protein then it will inhibit the dorsal to form its function means dorsal what it does it causes the ventilation of the cell so if dorsal protein is bound to cactus in that case it will not able to perform its function and hence all the cells will be dorsalized so this dorsal protein is in bound form to cactus once there is another protein that is known as tall protein when it's get active what it does it just phosphorylate the cactus protein what it does it phosphorylate the cactus protein so if it phosphorylate in that case now cactus is inactive so if it is inactive it releases the dorsal protein and when dorsal protein gets released what it does it enters the nucleus and thus ventralizes the cell so basically one question will uh, be arising in everyone's mind is what is that if the name is dorsal then why it is causing the ventilation of the cell fine so the reason behind is this that in developmental biology the name is given in according to this that if that protein is not present if that protein is inactive then what will be the result fine for example here as we can see if dorsal protein will not be there or it is inactive or it is in mutate state or it like in the cell it is mutated then in that case what it what will happen all the cell will be dorsalized why because dorsal protein is not present dorsal protein if it is present then it is ventilizing the cell so it is basically what its function was its function was it ventilizes the cell so if dorsal protein is not there or mutated in that case all the cells will be dorsalized so in developmental biology the name of proteins are given and the order that if they are mutated or not present then what will be the result so dorsal protein is one kind of that example a part of this another example is also like gap gene will study about gap gene so uh, gap gene is there why its name is gap gap gene because if those gene will not present that there will be gaps in the drosophila means segments will not form properly therefore if it is mutated then the gaps will be there so its name is on the basis of the fact that if they are not present then what will be the result similarly so uh, how this pol uh, poles are formed so the reason behind is this cactus and dorsal protein are in bound stage once the cactus protein get phosphorylated it releases the dorsal and dorsal protein enters the nucleus and thus ventilizes the cell apart of this dorsal protein as i already told there are lot more types of protein that are also involved in the formation of these dorsal and ventral poles so uh i am just naming uh, these proteins and will know the function of each and every protein one by one in the later classes so first is gherkin gherkin protein then torpedo receptor then pipe protein cactus protein dorsal protein spazzle protein tall protein tube pillar easter and snake are serine proteases then neuter protein and gastrulation defective or gd so in the previous uh, class also i told about the gherkin i told about the gherkin and the torpedo receptor
so what i told gherkin is a protein and topito is a receptor gherkin is basically a signaling molecule or a protein that goes and bind to the topito receptor once it gets bind to it it forms it's basically these are important in uh, dorsal protein like how the dorsal is formed so these two protein plays an important role in formation of dorsal pole apart of this pipe protein cactus dorsal spasm tall protein tube pella easter snake noodle and gastrulation defective all are important or plays role in ventral pole formation okay this dorsal protein and topido plays role in gherkin protein and topido receptor plays role in dorsal pole formation whereas the spike protein cactus dorsal spasal tall tube pella easter snake noodle protein and gastrulation defective plays role in ventralization of the cell so the function of cactus and dorsal or the how they play uh, role in formation of ventral the site i already told apart of this the function of all other proteins will learn uh, will learn like how they form uh, all the function of all these proteins will learn in the later classes like how they plays role in formation of ventral side of in the developing drosophila so that's all for today thank you thank you everyone so let's start so this is the diagram which depicts the signaling cascade pathway to form dorsal pole here i have numbered every step by 1 2 3 and likewise to show like how one step is linked to with the other step by a uh, by a signaling pathway and at last they form a dorsal uh, or they decide the dorsal cell fate so here in the first step which i have marked inside the nucleus there is a gherkin mrna so this gherkin mrna get translated to form a gherkin protein here with a green Uh, like green color i have shown the gherkin protein which goes and bind to a receptor because gherkin is a signaling molecule so if it is a signaling molecule obviously it will go to bind to a receptor here the receptor is torpedo receptor so this gherkin protein goes and bind to the torpedo receptor and after that this binding is third step first step is what inside the nucleus gherkin mrna is there which gets translated to gherkin this is the second step then this gherkin protein goes and bind to the torpedo receptors this is the third step after this so this just the binding with the torpedo receptor decides the dorsal cell fate or causes the dorsalization of that particular cell uh, cell part so after that what happens once the dorsalization cell fate is defined or decided then it inhibits the pipe synthesis why it inhibits the pipe synthesis because pipe protein is basically very important in ventral cell fate deciding in deciding the ventral cell fate here as i have shown the fifth step is what pipe synthesis and this pipe synthesis is very much important because it is the only protein that initiate the ventralization cell fate deciding process or signaling cascade so in that case pipe is very much important to the ventral cell fate and thus once the gherkin gets bind to the torpedo receptor what it does it inhibits the pipe synthesis protein so that this site forms the dorsal and thus inhibiting the ventral uh, cell fate on this side so this is all about how the dorsal pole gets formed so here fifth step i have shown the pipe synthesis once the pipe is synthesized then the ventral cell fate and formation of ventral get starts so how this finally the ventral pole get formed we'll learn later so this is i have just written to remember like uh, for the remembrance like how the dorsal pole is forming and what is the signaling pathway so first step was what first step was oocyte nucleus travels to anterior dorsal side of oocyte where the gherkin mrna is located this gherkin mrna is translated to form the gherkin protein that is the second step which is received by the torpedo receptors this torpedo signal causes follicle cells to differentiate to a dorsal morphology and thus the dorsal cell fate is defined in a cell what 
happens after this? After this, it inhibits the pipe protein synthesis inside the in the dorsal side. Okay. So once the pipe protein synthesis is inhibited in dorsal side, the dorsal cell fate part is clear. Okay. Now the cell have the dorsal pole. After that, this gherkin does not diffuse to ventral side. Means as the gherkin plays an important role in the dorsalization of the cell, therefore it should not diffuse to ventral side because it is responsible for dorsal fate. And whatever protein which is responsible for for particular function, it should remain on that side because in developmental biology, all the things are dependent on the concentration of proteins. And the morphogen gradient they create. So, on the basis of that, gherkin protein should not diffuse to the ventral side, and thus responsible for dorsal fate. So, where I left in that previous image, I left over there to show like how the dorsal side was formed. After that, at the last point, I showed at the fifth step is like pipe is synthesized toward the ventral side. So, once the pipe gets synthesized to this ventral side, after the synthesis uh, synthesis, uh, synthesis of pipe protein, what it does, it basically goes and binds to the nodal protein. And after it binds to the nodal protein, there is already already present sulfated vitellin membrane proteins. They bind with the GD, but this GD is gasification defective protein. So this GD protein shape is changed by the formation of pipe synthesis that goes to bind to nodal protein. And after binding to the nodal protein, the shape of the GD protein gets changed. And after changing the shape of the GD protein, it binds with the sulfated vitellin membrane proteins that is already present over this side. And once these two binds, so to this structure, there is another protein which is known as snake protein that is binding to this side. Once it gets bind, it cleaves the ester. Ester basically is what ester is, as I already told, it is the serine proteases. Serine proteases means what? It cleaves at serine position. So once it cleaves at serine position, now this structure is free. And this structure will go and bind to the spazzle protein as it already is. Uh, serine proteases therefore it cleaves this spazzle protein and once it gets cleaved this shape gets removed and goes and bind to the tall protein here tall is already present so tall protein gets bind to that cleaved part of the spazzle protein it's get bind and after binding it binds to the pelle and tube okay so this these four gets bind which four spazzle tall then pelle and tube they bind and forms this kind of structure. Once this structure is formed, what it does, it goes and phosphorylate the cactus. Cactus protein is basically, it is already present in the linkage form and it binds to the dorsal and inhibits its release. But once this structure, the stall and spazzle binds with the pelle and tube, once the structure is formed, they phosphorylate the cactus protein and after phosphorylation, cactus protein releases dorsal. So once dorsal protein is released, what it does? It goes inside the nucleus. Once it enters the nucleus, it causes a ventral cell fate or it causes a ventralized embryo cell. So this is how all these proteins are interlinked and forming a cascade and thus causing the ventral cell fate. So we'll just revise it. Like pipe is synthesized, pipe protein is synthesized, it goes and binds to the nodal protein and changes the shape of GD. GD is gasification defective protein. Once its shape is gets changed, this GD protein binds with the sulfated vitellin membrane proteins, and these three, uh, these two binds. After binding to this, the snake protein comes and bind, binds to this structure that further binds to Easter protein. Easter is basically a serine proteases that cleaves it and this cleaved part goes and binds to the spazzle. After binding, it cleaves the spazzle also because it is again functioning as a serine proteases. So it cleaved this spazzle protein. After cleavage, this cleaved part goes and binds to the tall. Tall is already present over there. Tall and spazzle, no, cleave part of spazzle binds and they further bind to pelle and tube. 
After binding, they phosphorylate the cactus protein and after phosphorylation, cactus releases the dorsal protein and thus now dorsal is free. Once it gets free, it goes and enter to the nucleus side, nu inside the nucleus and thus causing the ventralized embryo cell. So this is how all these proteins are functioning and causing the ventral pole formation. Similarly, in the formation of dorsalized cell, it is resultant of Gherkin protein which binds to the torpedo receptors and after binding they causes the dorsalized cell. So this is all about the dorsal and ventral pole formation. So this is the ventral fate signaling pathway. Here I have just put it in point for a better, uh, better, uh, better way of remembrance means it's easy to remember from all these points you can go through and just keep in mind like how the ventral fate is being forming. So pipe is synthesized by the ventral follicles, pipe signals the sulfate's ventral vitellin proteins, this sulfated vitellin membrane proteins bind to the gastrulation defective. This gastrulation defective cleaves snake and activates its Snakes form a camp complex with the snake and the uncleaved ester proteins. Ester protein is cleaved to active form. This active ester binds and cleaves spasal. Activated spasal binds to tall receptor protein. Tall activation activates tube and pelle, which phosphorylate the cactus protein. Cactus is then degraded and releases it, it from dorsal side. Dorsal protein enters the nucleus and the ventralizes is the cell. So this is how the ventral fate is decided. Uh, so after this, as I already told, the most interesting part of developmental biology is the mutant cases. Like if something gets mutated, what will happen? So that portion we'll learn in the next slide. So that's all for today. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Here is a brief overview of what we will learn further about segmentation genes. Thank you for watching this video on the biomix. We will come up with more concepts. Thank you.